الحمد لله الحمد لله وكفى وسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى أما بعد أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم يعلم بأن الله يرى صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected ulama elders, brothers in Islam Today is the day of Jumu'ah and one special action to be done on the day of Jumu'ah is the recital of salawat upon our beloved master Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah give us tawfiq every day we recite Durood Sharif Salawat on Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam and on the day of Jumu'ah we try to increase and Akavir mentioned, our elders mentioned we try to read a thousand times Salawat on Nabi alayhi salatu wa salam and they've got great hope and umid that before a person leaves this world Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will show him his place in Jannah by reading a thousand times, salawat on Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam. Actually, there's one amal also. Somebody asked, Hazrat Shaykh al-Hadith, Malala Muhammad Zakariya rahmatullah alayhi, I want to go for Umrah. Is there any amal to recite? Allah can open up ways for us to go for Umrah. So he said, one very simple way is you read certain one place every day for a year. And you read a thousand times Durood Sharif in one sitting. One thousand times Durood in one sitting. And for one year you carry on. And inshallah within that year, Allah Ta'ala will take a person for Umrah. So that person he tried it out and alhamdulillah he was successful. He went for Umrah. And the person who heard it, he also made amal upon it. He also Allah Ta'ala took him for Umrah in the, within that year. So this thousand times Durood Sharif, Salawat al-Nabi alayhi salam. And every Friday we try and read. Inshallah a person will leave this world with Iman. And not only that, Inshallah he'll leave this world with shock and desire for the year after. Allah give us tawfiq Inshallah. The ayat of the quran Karim, which I have recited. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us one very important part of our iman that alam ya alam bi anna Allah yara don't you know Allah is watching you don't you know that Allah is watching you this quality was found to a great extent in the hearts of sahaba radiyallahu anhum that every moment that Allah was watching them in the quran karim in many places Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this aqeedah this belief alimul ghaibi was shahadati al kabir al muta'al Allah is knowledge of the unseen and what we can see سَوَاءٌ مِّنْكُمْ مَنْ أَسَّرَّ الْقَوْلَ وَمَنْ جَهَرَ بِهِ وَمَنْ هُوَ مُسْتَخْفٍ مِّنْ لَيْلِ وَسَارِبٌ مِّنْ نَهَارٍ It is exactly equal in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those who speak quietly and those who speak loudly. If I'm speaking loudly for me and you, if I'm speaking quietly to you and loudly to you, there's a difference. The person who is speaking quietly, you can't hear so well. One who is speaking loudly, you can hear. Allah says for him it's exactly equal. We speak softly or loud. The person who caught it in his heart and he's thinking of something, certain thoughts in his mind. And a person is expressing it for Allah, this is completely exactly the same. Equal, equal for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, a person in the night, darkness of the night, no one is watching him. And he's doing a certain action. And that person who openly walking in the, is walking outside in the brightness of the day and is doing an action. For Allah, this is completely equal. Allah has full knowledge of it. So anyhow, these eyes of the Quran Kareem had come down to such an extent some sahaba radiallahu anhum actually felt shy to go and relieve themselves when they used to go to have a shower they used to cover their whole bodies they were frightened to remove their clothing they felt shy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching them at every moment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the sahaba radiallahu anhum were to be examples for the whole of mankind till the day of qiyamah so Allah ta'ala had to correct this, this view and this belief of sahaba radiallahu anhum so it won't become difficult for people thereafter so Allah sent ayats of the Quran Kareem down that you cannot make hulu, you cannot exceed the bounds in deen. Allah Ta'ala said, Allah inna um yathnuna sudura um yastaghfumin. They are trying to cover themselves so they can hide from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah says, remember the time when they are covering themselves with their clothing. Ya'lamu ma yusirruna wa ma yu'alinun. Allah knows what's outward and what you are hiding inside. Everything is equal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And never mind this, inna hu alimum bidhati sudur. Allah has even got knowledge of what is hidden in the depths of your heart. The thoughts which are going through your mind, Allah is fully aware of this. So it just shows the level the Sahaba radiallahu anhu had this, this thought in their mind that every moment Allah is watching me. And really this is a quality as a Muslim we have to bring this. Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam in one hadith said, Afdalul iman, the most virtuous level of iman is an ta'lama, you must know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with you wherever you may be. Whatever you are doing, Allah is with me. Allah is watching me. Allah knows my every action. So this is the quality of a person of iman. I'm in my shop. I cannot cheat somebody because Allah is watching me. I'm sitting and looking at my cell phone. I cannot look at haram because Allah is watching me. Everything in my life, a believer got this, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. 
If my wife is sitting next to me now, I won't go on that evil website because I know my wife is watching me. But when the minute she falls asleep, if I'm going on it, it shows my iman is still very deficient. I haven't got this yakin and conviction. We all know, mashallah, as Muslims, Allah is watching us. But to bring this reality into our hearts. Hazrat Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhumah, the great Sahabi, he's traveling on a, through the desert with his companions. Extremely hot day. And they passed by one shepherd. And this shepherd, uh, they called him for meals, come and join us for meals. So he said, no, I'm fasting. Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhumah, was surprised. He said, it's not the month of Ramadan. It's an extremely hot day. In the middle of the desert, you are fasting. What's the reason for this? He said, I'm preparing for the day. It will be said in the, in the year after that now eat and drink and enjoy yourself because of the sacrifices you had made in the, in the past days, in the days of this world, where you stayed hungry. This is actually for the month of Ramadan. The person is staying hungry. He's not eating, drinking. He's going to get great rewards in the year after. He stays hungry in this world. Allah will feed him in the year after. So he said, I'm preparing for that day. I'm actually keeping nafal rosas, nafal fast. So Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu was surprised that in the middle of the desert and this man, he is making such sacrifices. He said, let me test his iman. So he told me, see, you're a shepherd, you're a poor person, you're a slave of somebody, you're looking after these goats. Why don't you give us one of these goats? We'll purchase it from you. We'll pay you the money. Then at the end of the day, you've got some money, you can buy whatever you want to. No one will know. And we'll cut the animal. We'll give you some kilos of meat also you can eat from here. And then we'll also benefit you'll benefit and your master he doesn't know you got 100 200 sheep here goats here where well, he'll know where one goes missing you just tell him one wolf came and ate it up and it don't make any difference so first when he told him he said no i can't do this i am the slave and my master he, he will count his animals so the live animal said no don't worry about him he's a rich man one goat won't make a difference so come and let's make this deal so this person immediately said fa'in allah fa'in allah and where's allah gone to isn't allah watching me doesn't Allah know what I'm doing? Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu was so happy with this answer. That this belief, a shepherd in the middle of the desert, he's not coming for Juma Bayans, like how we're having, mashallah, we're getting encouragement, the Bleak Jamaat coming to his house and encouraging him and calling towards the masjid and calling towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is in the desert. But he's in the time of Nabi alayhi salatu wa in time of Sahaba radiallahu anhu. What Iman was in his heart? One village, a village dweller, a person in a, in a, a desert dweller, but what iman he had, immediately Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu goes to the market, uh, to the boss, the, the master, and he says, I want to buy the slave of yours. He buys the slave, he buys all of the goats, and then he tells this youngster that because of your iman, I'm freeing you for the pleasure of Allah, and all of these animals are also yours, I'm giving them to you. And he gives them everything to this person, and he freed him. Now look, if that man cheated, and he'd stolen that one goat, he would have got some worldly benefits, small amount of worldly benefits, but he would have destroyed his akhirat, the life of the year after. In this worldly life, he would have been disgraced, embarrassed. But he had iman. And he knew, my Allah is watching me. And I cannot cheat, I cannot deceive. And because he dealt with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what Allah gave him? Allah gave him honor. Now, 1400 years later, we are speaking about his greatness in the masjid. Thousands of kilometers away. Allah gave him his freedom. Allah gave him wealth also. So really, a person who deals with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will never let that person go to loss. Uh, we are, we, all our matters, we have to have this yaqeen and conviction. Allah is watching me. Allah is fully aware. He even knows the thoughts which are passing through my mind. A person is sitting and fantasizing and thinking of all evil things. Or he's plotting and planning. He's jealous over somebody else. He wants to bring somebody else down in life. Allah is fully aware exactly what is in the heart of a person. So our dealing is not, we're just doing whatever we are doing in life. But every matter of ours is watched by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah is dealing with us. And when Allah sees his per the person is sincere, sometimes Allah tests a person. And somebody comes now, he's selling haram goods. You know the goods are stolen. But you say, my Allah is watching me. I can make so much of profits. But I'm a Muslim and a Muslim can never deceive and cheat. I'll even go through loss, no problem. But I cannot go against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My Allah is watching me. Then this person, he won't cheat. See what Allah will bless him later on. And uh, Hazrat Mulana Shahaki Muhammad Akhtar Sahib Rahmatullah Ali, mentioned so beautifully. He said that many people take this ayat in, in a very negative sense. That don't you know Allah is watching? So they take it in the sense that Allah is watching, Allah wants to punish me, Allah is going to become angry with me if I do wrong. He said that is one meaning. But he said, why don't you take it in a positive way? Don't you know Allah is watching? Don't you know the sacrifice which you are making, Allah is watching it? You could have made so much of money, but for Allah's pleasure you said, no, how can I do this wrong? Don't you know Allah is watching the sacrifice you are making? Don't you think He appreciates 
Allah is shakur. Allah is the most appreciative. When a person does a little bit for Allah, Allah gives him an abundance. A person could have watched haram. He's, he, he can do haram. He, he can, a youngster, he wants to have a girlfriend. But he knows my Allah is watching me. So when he sacrifices his desires for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doesn't he know Allah is watching him? He wants to watch one movie, but he says he's against the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I can't watch all this filth and this dirt. I can't waste my time. So he's sacrificing his desires for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one knows. He's walking in the street. There's a beautiful woman walking past him. And now the desire comes. I want, let me look at this woman and enjoy myself. I can go and chat with her. I can talk with her. I can flirt with her. But he says, no, Allah is watching. So when that no one is, even his wife doesn't know, no one knows it's between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But Allah is watching that qurbani and sacrifice which a person is making. And when a person makes that sacrifice, he says, don't you know Allah is watching me? Then Allah says, now I will bless that person. So really in, in our life we must think, there are so many things which we are doing in life which are wrong. But if a person 